and we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this segment, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, where I go ahead and I give off a list of some of the most, some of the more disappointing players of this season. Now, this is obviously like before I begin. I am not trying to... There's different levels of disappointment. There's, like, um, players that are great, but, like, um, that are expected to be great, but aren't... Um, that, but haven't really met that expectation this season. There's some role players who have been showing stride as well, but also have sort of underperformed. And I'm not trying to say that these players are bad whatsoever. That is not the goal of this segment at all. But... There is, but the goal of this segment is to just sort of like, um, just to talk about like um, these players and I'm not trying to discredit anything that they've been doing. However, what was expected, I'm just going to talk about what was really expected of them going into this season and how they sort of haven't really met that expectations. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the player is bad, and you'll see what I mean in a minute, but. I'm just going to go ahead and um, give off the list, but I'm not trying to slander any of these players. I just wanted to let everybody know before I begin on this segment. So, one of the more disappointing players, in my personal opinion, um, I'll go from like um, what I think is like least like it'll be ten to one. So it'll be like the bottom of the list all the way up to the top of the list, in my personal opinion. So, I believe Cade is actually one of the. Um, is actually one of the more disappointing players on um, in the NBA. Now, obviously, like it might be a little bit unfair to say that because Cade is on the worst team in the NBA, and he is putting up great numbers uh, for being on the worst team in the NBA. But again, this is sort of like this is sort of the story of like good player on a bad team type of thing, and. Being that he was drafted a high overall pick a few years ago, it was sort of expected that he will help elevate this team, and that sort of hasn't really happened. And again, I know that this team is the worst team, but if you look at his on-off numbers, the team tends to do better without him on the court than they do with him on the court. And not to mention, there have been talks earlier this season that the Detroit Pistons' winning percentage is better when Cade sits out than it is when Cade is in the lineup. So the fact that he's making his team worse, just going off of the numbers, like, again, he puts up great stats, but if they don't impact winning, what's the point of those stats? They're sort of empty. And the numbers show that he's been, that the team is actually worse when he's on the field. So with that in mind, I feel like, and the fact that the Pistons drafted him at a relatively high overall, I feel like he's sort of been a little bit of a disappointment for the Pistons in this season because there's no reason why the team should be playing better without their best player or the player that can produce as much as he can on the offensive side of the ball. That's just my personal opinion. Another player that's been relatively disappointed, that's been relatively disappointing this season to me, is Andrew Wiggins. Now, Andrew Wiggins, he's sort of on the same boat. He was on the same boat as uh, Cade Cunningham on his time with the Timberwolves, how he was the best player on a really bad team, and he was putting up a lot of raw stats and great raw stats. They weren't relatively efficient raw stats, but they were raw stats, like 21 points per game type of stats. And it's, it's another deal. Good stats, bad team. And... He was drafted second. He was drafted uh, high overall and was a rookie of the year at one point. So, with that in mind, I think it's very, very like it's very disappointing the fact that he's not like a top two, top three option on the Golden State Warriors team right now. Like he's more used, like he's more used as like an anchor, like for defense, um, for the team, and he's a great role player. And but he's he was talked about as being like um, he was top two in the draft and he was talked about and he was a rookie of the year. He was talked about being the player that would lead the Timberwolves to um, to win to a winning season along with Carl Anthony Towns. And he's he hasn't really developed into that. Now, obviously, he won a championship as like the third option on that team, helping the Golden State Warriors. But again, it's far less of a role than what was really expected of him, at least in my personal opinion. And I believe that, um, and cause seeing as how, like, even with him on Golden State, his numbers are relatively not that efficient, I feel like he's been a disappointment. That's just my personal opinion. And 
Another player that um another player that I have on this list is uh, Scoot Henderson. Now, a lot of people might not agree with me and say that like, oh, he's just a rookie and it's a little bit harsh because there's a lot more there's like the whole new scheme, a whole new way to adjust. You have to adjust the way you play, you have to adjust to better players, you have to adjust to all of this and like I totally understand that. But people also forget that this guy was being talked about as being better than Victor Wembanyama, a better pick than Victor Wembanyama. Just because like Victor was like this scrawny, oh Victor's this scrawny kid from France. He's not. He doesn't have that all-around game like uh, Scoot Henderson and whatnot. And the biggest problem with Scoot is that he can't shoot. And you guys know how I feel about people who can't shoot. If you can't shoot, you're being a liability to your team on the floor. And his shooting numbers aren't great whatsoever. He has everything else. He has that LeBron-type build. He can do everything. He can score points. He can pass the ball. He can get rebounds. He can block shots. All of that. But it's the shooting that's the problem. And his PER is also terrible. He has a PER of under 9. He's very turnover-prone. And this is, again, this is someone that was talked about as being a better pick than Victor Wembenyama. And... So far, that's been proved the exact opposite with this season, as Victor Wembanyama is leading all the rookies in Rookie of the Year and is clear-cut the best rookie in his draft class. And is clear-cut going to win Rookie of the Year, in my personal opinion. He leads all the rookies in every single possible stat that you could think of. So, with that in mind, it's like... All this hype around Scoot Henderson, it's sort of been proving to be... Um, it's all just proven to be hype so far, and it's been relatively disappointing because, like, again, Victor has lived up to the hype, but Scoot hasn't lived up to that hype. But that's just me. Another player that I got on this list, this might be a little bit personal because he is a Brooklyn Net, um, is Mikal Bridges. Now, obviously, Mikal Bridges, he's not a bad player, right? But the reason why a lot of people, like, really give him that praise is because of how durable he is. He doesn't miss a single game. He will play every single game. And I like that about Mikal, but that's sort of the only argument that you have for him right now. Compared to what he was last season, he's a much more inefficient scorer. He's a much more inefficient shooter. And everything about him has just sort of been relatively inefficient. Everything has dropped. And he hasn't made that leap yet into being the best player on the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, like, it's to be expected coming from... But, like, coming from Phoenix to this situation and with the production that he was having um late like late in the season with the Brooklyn Nets it was sort of expected that he would take that leap but as of right now he hasn't really done that and the next player on this list is Jalen Green and he's disappointing because in my personal opinion he's literally just a shot chucker he's a shot chucker on a bad team and he's shooting the he's shooting the most inefficient this year as opposed to what he's done previous years like the last three years that he's been playing and it's the worst that it's been his numbers are the worst that it's been and it's only got like and the team Houston as a whole has gotten better even Dylan Brooks who was the villain of the the NBA last year or and he's gotten better on the offensive side of the ball for Houston and I feel like Jalen Green he's not the player that like Houston thought he was going to be he's just a shot chucker so Houston should rebuild around Sengun and not Jalen Green, and they should get rid of Jalen Green as soon as they can. Number f um, at the the next slot that we got is uh, Bradley Beal, and he's he's had a he's been up and down this season. Like he's real he's very injury prone, and I feel like that's sort of the main reason why I consider it disappointing because he's injury prone, and on top of that, in the games that he's played, he's not been the best player that he has been. Obviously. Like, your uh, production and points are going to drop when you're playing with players like Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. But, again, your best ability is your availability. He hasn't been available in any of these games. And it's not only that, he hasn't really been playing well in any of these games. And he doesn't really impact winning all that much. Um, I looked recently, and, like, when he, scores 40 point, when he scores 40 points, his team ends up getting a losing record. So, so it's like his team ends up losing, and he has a losing record when scoring 40 points. So I wouldn't really say that his team, like, his 40 points really have an impact towards winning. That's just me, though. Um, another player on this list, Patrick Williams. Um, he was a top four. Not many people know who Patrick Williams is, and that's a problem that I have because he was picked top four in 2020, and nobody's really talked about him. There's, there's nobody that um, bothers to, like, mention how much of, like, a disappointment that he's been, like, in the projections because 
top four. He's expected to be something on the Bulls. And the Bulls, they haven't done anything um, recently in these last four years. Like, they've just been the same mediocre team that they've always been with Zach Levine. And he's, he was supposed to be, like, the one to, like, help them with that. But, like, he's, he hasn't there. He hasn't developed. And he doesn't impact. He doesn't pass. And the only accolade that he has is, like, being an all-rookie team, which isn't really much. So... Just wanted to point some attention on that. And another player, Damian Lillard. Again, like I, I've talked about Damian Lillard in previous segments, but it's still very apparent. The only thing that he's done on a great level this season is free throws. Like everything else, like the free throws are what boost his true shooting efficiency. Everything else is exceptionally bad. And he's dropped in every single statistical category in terms of efficiency, points. Um, assist, rebounds, all of that. And that is expected when you're playing against, when you're playing with someone like Giannis and you're playing on a good team. But the efficiency is not expected to drop. It's expected to actually go up given how you're not forced to take as many shots. And he averaged over 32 in his last year in, um, in Portland. But after finally leaving, his per game averages went down. His efficiency fell off a cliff. It was um, it went from 64 true shooting all the way down to 59 true shooting, and that is a very big drop for someone who has like um, who's as good as Damian Lillard and like as good of a three point shooter as Damian Lillard. That's a big drop, but that's and like the overall state of the team with the Milwaukee Bucks, they should be competing with like the Boston Celtics for that one spot, and they just aren't. But that's just my personal opinion of why I think Damian Lillard has been a little bit disappointing. And that leaves us with two more people on this list. And these two people are so disappointing, I literally could not pick between the two. So I'm just going to let the, the comments and the viewers go ahead and decide what they think, who they think is the more disappointing between these players. But the two players are Jordan Poole and Ben Simmons. Surprise, surprise, you guys knew I was going to put Ben Simmons on this list. But... I'll talk about a little bit of Jordan Poole before I go into Ben Simmons. So, I know for a fact that everybody in the, that every single NBA fan was expecting Jordan Poole to average a ridiculous 28 points, 30 points per game on on the Washington Wizards. It makes sense. Oh, Jordan Poole has no pressure. He's on a bad team. He has the green light to take every single shot imaginable. And... From what he was playing on Golden State, it looked like he could be that type of player. Like, he would go off and get 30 points. And he was only 24, and he was averaging 17 points per game super efficiently in the playoffs, on in the biggest stage, in the finals. He was averaging these types of numbers. And when you think about that, and when you think about now, like, he's on a team that's, like, not expecting much, like, in terms of wins... And how he has the green light to take every single shot imaginable, it's almost expected that he ends up getting 30 points per game. But obviously, like if you've been paying attention, that has clearly not been the case for Jordan Poole whatsoever. And that has not been the case for the Washington Wizards as a team whatsoever. Like, are there not, no, like, I get that, like, there aren't that many baddies over and, like, compared to Golden State, but, like, seriously? Like, th- what he's been doing this season is horrible. And he, he, he dropped severely in efficiency, in efficiency. He dropped severely in points per game. He dropped in turnovers. He rose in turnovers, actually. He dropped in box plus minus. He dropped in every single stat. And I feel like this is the first time in a while where a player goes from being a great option on a winning team to going to a bad team and actually being worse on that bad team where he has the green light. I can't remember off the top of my head a player that was averaging an efficient 17 points per game in the playoffs and the finals goes to another team and just immediately plays worse and plays like one of the worst players in the league. Because, again, the talent with Jordan Poole is there. It's just his decision-making and his efficiency is just... It's unbelievable. Like, it's really, really bad. And like again, like I'll just pull up I'll just pull up the box scores on the previous game that like where he played against Golden State. And he ended up he ended up shooting five for seventeen for only twelve points. This is the type of shooting that has been going on day like daily for um for Jordan Poole. And it's just 
it's unbelievable, like how how he's fallen. The, the third Splash Brother falling all the way down to like just a scrub in in the NBA, to, according to the media, and it's really it, it's it's insane to me. And obviously, I had to put Ben Simmons on this list because you guys just know like all my opinions on Ben Simmons. They are not good opinions. I do not like Ben Simmons. I do not like his play style. I do not like him as a player. I do not like his mentality whatsoever. I just can't stand it. And it's obviously like not obviously it's not because of just personal bias as to why I put him at number one. I'm putting it at number one because again, we go in this year every single time. Like we he was expected to be the next LeBron James. He was putting up those types of like he was expected to be the next LeBron James and he hasn't he hasn't come close to that whatsoever. He has all of the gifts every single year, day in and day out. He has all the gifts, all the trainers, all the anything that you could possibly need to be the player that the player that the media wants you to be. And he just doesn't do it. And I don't understand why he doesn't do it. He doesn't bother working on his game and I don't get it. I seriously don't. I've never seen a player try to stay the same. I've never seen an NBA player try to not be better than what they already are. I've never seen that. And with that reason, I have to put Ben Simmons as one of the more the most disappointing players. Not to be the fact that he's on my team is a, is obviously like um, more incentive to putting him there. But again, it's every single season he has the tools, but he just doesn't work for it. And I don't understand why, because of everyone that I've mentioned, he's arguably the most physically gifted out of all of those players. And there's just no improvement coming from him. And it's every single year. So like a lot of people might... um might just be like, well, he can't be the most disappointing player this season because, like, we already know how disappointing he is, and we know his peak, we know his ceiling. Yes, we know his ceiling, but he's still a young player. He could still develop in being the best player if he just learns how to shoot. But he just doesn't, he just doesn't try doing it, and it infuriates me because it's like, you are the six foot ten player. You are great at everything else. You are great at every part of the game. You just need to get confident to shoot the ball. It is not something, it is not a difficult task. We saw Lonzo Ball um, end up learning how to shoot the ball um, when he was playing, when his time on the Chicago Bulls. And we saw how he was able to develop and change his jump shot when the media was all over him when he was on the Lakers about how funky his jump shot looked. So it's definitely possible for a player to go from being a bad shooter to a great three-point shooter like how Lonzo did. And the fact that Ben Simmons hasn't done that yet is just, it's infuriating to me. And he just chooses not to play a lot of these games, which is also infuriating to me because he is so gifted as a player and he just doesn't work for it. It's, it, it, it's just, it's disappointing. And every single year I'm disappointed in, um, in the type of player that he chooses to be. But that's just me and my person in in my opinions on um on those players. Obviously, like I, other than Ben Simmons, like I don't think any of these players are bad. And even then, with Ben Simmons, I don't really think he's a. Ba- I'm not saying that he's a bad basketball player. I'm just saying that their expectations and what they could do, they aren't doing. And that's sort of what this segment has been about. I'm not trying to backlash any of these players. Well, maybe Ben Simmons, but. With that, we're out of time for this um, with the segment, and that's the end of the show. So thank you guys for tuning in to GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a, um, it really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. And as always, I'd like to remind everyone to please remember to tip and to donate to get your comments recognized. The link is in the description as well as below the ticker on every show segment. That is streamelements.com slash gsmcsportsnetwork dot slash tip. 
really helps the show, makes the show much more interactive between myself, the host, you guys, the viewers. The link is in the description as well as in the ticker, as I mentioned previously, but that's the end of the show. Thank you once again for watching. I am your host, Nelson, and as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great.